How's it going? So I'm out here in the Blue Mountain Range of Northeast Oregon like always. This time, however, um, I'm on the land we purchased for our nonprofit hands-on herbalism farm. Um, we're clearly not to that goal yet. I mean, we're the goal of having the land, but we're not open yet. But, you know, there's lots of plant allies on this property. It's one of the reasons that I picked it beyond kind of, well, being where I grew up at. Um, and I know it's winter time right now. It's a real mild winter here in Northeast Oregon, which is odd because all the signs pointed towards a heavy winter. I don't know, it might take us by surprise in February, but we're at the end of December and it's only like, it's like 35 degrees out right now, um, Fahrenheit. Some people might think that sounds cold, but not for here. It's like single hoodie warm for me and people that are, you know, adapted to here. But anyhow, um, even though it's a mild winter, but even if it was a hard winter, there are always like plant allies still out and available in the wintertime. A lot of herbalists and, and budding herbalists alike get really sad in the wintertime because they feel like they can't be out on the land um, spending time with these plant allies and stuff. But you can be, and, and if you time it right, and depending on your season, um, you can be out here in the end of December even gathering technically a fruit. So today, now that I pushed through all that, <laughs> we're here to talk about rose hips. Um, and I have, look how big this rose hip bush is. And uh, if he follows me a touch, this is my phone, and I know I'm going to dig out my camera here pretty soon. I plan on this year being, uh, 2020 being the year of videos for you guys. But um, the whole way down, we own a little over about 42 acres or so. The whole 42 acres is basically covered in rose bushes. Um, it is and isn't a blessing. Some of these are native, some of them are not. I'm not going to really talk about the specific species because... A rose hip is a rose hip is a rose hip. It doesn't matter if it's a rose you're growing in your garden or a, a wild rose. Now, some of these are native, some of them are invasive. As sad as it sounds, we're gonna have to take a lot of these out to be able to um, use the land because they, they grow like an invasive even if they're a native. So it's like, you literally like, I probably have half a metric tons of rose hips on my property. We're not gonna get rid of them all. We just, you just, you have to control them or they, they take over. But one really cool thing about all these rose hips is that in the middle of winter, you can still gather them. In fact, um, if you haven't gathered rose hips yet and you're thinking that you missed out, you actually did yourself a favor because when roses, when rose hips get hit by frost again and again, or even just a one time, um, basically their riboflavin content and things like vitamin C and all those good flavonoids and stuff, they skyrocket. Um, it's pretty interesting really. If you pick a rose hip before frost has hit it, like a lot of people I see picking like late summer, like early fall, and these big, beautiful, perfectly smooth rose hips, you know, because they don't want to pick the ones that end up looking kind of wilty here, you know? They think that these have gone bad, but the truth is this little rose hip has more medicinal value than the rose hip that you picked in fall before it got frost. And so I can come out here and I can say, you know what? That rose hip is still good. This rose hip is still good. Now this one doesn't have a whole lot on her, but you can find, you know, I'll probably find more, but there is a point in time where they do go bad. And so when you are picking in late winter, if, you, if you're able to pick in December, if you go out, wrinkly and a little mushy is okay. But you wanna stay away from the ones that, like this one is too far gone. Look, this is a really good example right here if he gets in close. So this rose hip is definitely too far gone to gather, but this rose hip is not. You know, so you have to be more selective when you're picking in the winter time for rose hips. Um, but these berries are literally engineered by the plant to last. Um, now, rose hips themselves are fantastic for things like colds, flus, boosting your immune system. Um, but because they are packed with like riboflavins and stuff, um, they're like a, oh geez, I totally just lost the word. I had it in my head and I lost it. <laughs> I swear to God, I hate when that happens. Um, 
oh, they fight free radicals. They're like an anti-free radical, and free radicals are the things that, like, the sun has free radicals, there's natural free radicals, there's free radicals around you that you're breathing in chemicals, you're getting it on your food. Free radicals are just the thing in life. They are what makes you age. And so she's packed with all these antioxidant levels and flavonoids and things like that that really fight um, those free radicals. But she's also pretty good as like a, I don't want to say she's a laxative because she's not going to make you take a violent shit, but she is going to help your body regulate because she's got some slimy bits to her, like mucus bits, and you're like, oh, that sounds horrible, but it's not like, you're not going to notice it. It just means that she really soothes your digestive tract. Um, and she's just all around good at supporting your immune system because a, usually a single rose hip has more vitamin C than the average orange you're going to eat. So she's going to really, really pack a punch of vitamin C and that makes her um, the antiviral and antibacterial that she is because vitamin C is just a powerhouse at that. Um, but yeah, so you can get out here in the wintertime and you can find rose hips to pick. Now when it comes to um, gathering ethics with rose hips, these are a food source for a lot of birds and deer. Um, bear in the fall, but not so much if they're hibernating where you're at. Grouse, things like that. Um, and squirrels and little rodents and all kinds of things rely on them. So if you don't have 41 acres worth of roses, <laughs> if you just come across sparse rose bushes here and there, um, do pick sparingly. Um, of course, if they're in your garden, that's up to you to decide how much that you want to leave for wildlife and how wildlife friendly you want your garden to be. Um, but also, one cool thing about picking in late in the season is that if you look on the ground here, if he looks down here at the ground, there's lots of rose hips on the ground already. So you know that most of the chipmunks and like birds that don't fly a whole lot, like grouse and stuff fly, but they mainly stay on the ground. They like to hide and they really only fly when you kick them up and out of where they're hiding. They're going to be foraging on the stuff on the ground. So you can come here and you can say, all right, well, I can take a fair amount off of here because I know that the, the, most of the rodents and the birds are going to eat the rose hips on the ground. But I also know that deer tend to forage a little higher than head level. And so if I stick to this lower area here and I'm taking like, you know, every third hip or every fourth hip like that and I work my way so I don't make one bald spot, you can get a fair amount of hips without um, damaging the food source for the wildlife around you. Um, and now with these, you can still make a tincture with them. You can dry them, they're, they're great for tincture. You can dry them out and make a really delicious tea. You can make uh, jelly with them. Some people make try to make a jam, but her seeds on the inside are kind of, they're kind of hairy. See that? Um, and so you really wouldn't want to make a jam out of that because this will cause irritation. So some people, some people try to remove that before they dry them to make tea. But you don't have to work so hard. You can just dry them as is because the seeds have a lot of medicinal value in them too. But once you dry them, just put them in like um, a reusable tea bag, like those muslin cloth bags. And uh, then you don't even have to worry about the hairs or simmer them as is and then just strain it through a really tightly woven strainer to get those hairs out. Because that's a lot of work. If you want to save a, a substantial amount of rose hips for the winter and make tea or whatever or jelly or whatever you're going to make, you really would have to open up and de-seed every single rose hip. And, you know, I like making plant medicines, but damn, don't make it harder on yourself if you don't have to. Um, so yeah, you're smart enough to get out here and do this. You don't have to feel super sad. Even if you're somewhere where you're having a normal winter and there's like five feet of snow on the ground already, assuming you can walk on top of that snow and you can find rose hips, those rose hips will be kept even better because it's cold enough it acts like a refrigerator. They're being frozen. They're not going to go bad on you. So you can get out here and find these rose hips that are really nutritious for you and really medicinal and you didn't miss out on the season that you thought you did. Um, been a while since I've made a video, so I'm a little rusty. But if you like my videos, if you like to hear me jabber, if you like 
just impromptu go pick these rose hips make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you're watching on YouTube if you're watching me on Instagram because now I'm gonna be post like cross posting them if you're watching me on Instagram um, take a moment to turn on notifications that way you know when I post here to IGTV um, and like and comment and share all these things help get me uh, you know not hidden from the algorithm and helps other people learn this safe simple knowledge because you don't need to pay somebody thousands of dollars to learn to come out here and pick rose hips <laughs> all right you are smart enough to do this you've just got to put a coat on and get out there and see what's still waiting for you on the land so thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later bye